Hello, everyone. I'm back with a pretty big update, progress update. I got my coffee, got my soldering iron this morning. I'm just banging away at this thing. Um, the last couple days we had snow days, so my daughter was outside playing with her neighborhood friends, and I got a chance to take some care time because of that. And I made some progress on this project. Some of the things I want to talk about today is some of the deviations and kind of uh, illustrating what some of the changes I'm making over a regular Fender Deluxe Blackface. But you're going to notice probably right off the bat, uh, well, I'll, I'll step back and talk about what I'm doing sort of approach-wise. I'm doing a resto mod. So if you guys uh, might have used that term a few times now, resto mod meaning it's going to look a lot like a, a generic or original blackface at first glance, but then, you know, with the, with the cloth wire and some other strategic things. Um, but then as you look a little bit further, it's like putting disc brakes on a Mustang, like a nice 68 Mustang. It's not original, but disc brakes are so much better than those drum brakes. Um, if you ever get a chance to drive a 68 Mustang, you're going to understand why, especially if it doesn't have a power boost, uh, power brake system. But anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, a, I'm a gearhead also. But anyway, what we see here is this is a push-pull pot for, on the volume pot, so that's going to basically enable. There's normally a silver mica, or not silver mica, there's normally a ceramic cap for the bright cap on the deluxe reverb. Some folks clip it. Some people like to keep it in. This allows me to basically, when it's out like that, that's the bright cap engaged. When it's pushed in, the bright cap is disengaged. Um, instead of going with ceramic, this is a silver mica cap, which is supposed to be a little bit smoother. Um, Jerry Garcia's amps, according to Alembic and, and a few online resources, they basically swapped out all the ceramic capacitors with silver micas. Um, he doesn't, Jerry Garcia never used the bright cap, so that's going to be disabled if I'm trying to achieve that tone. Um, but yeah, so you see some cloth wires, and here's a mid pot. So what I'm doing for this mid pot is I'm, hopefully it's tasteful. Uh, it, I'm using this type of knob. It's a fender knob. Um, basically, if I put another one of these types of knobs, the spacing is different, and it will just look weird, so I went with that type. And remember that this is a Fender Dual Professional um, sort of uh, tone stack on the normal channel, and then here is a standard 65 vibrato tone stack um, with bright cap on, bright cap off, uh, channel. Another th upgrade I'm doing is that you see this 1 meg resistor. That is the basically the impedance resistor going in. Um, the, that's a source of noise, according to some folks. I'm using my, um, metal film. That's going to reduce the noise pretty much, uh, make it negligible. Here's an area that I'm not quite sure if I'm going to keep it long term or not, but this is original. I'm, getting, I'm going with original first, and I can mod it later. These are 68K wired in parallel, basically mimicking channel 1 on the right original 65. And same over here on the Fender Dual Professional channel. The Dual Professional channel, funny enough, uh, on the real Dual Professional, the input is, is actually, these are 10K. And that is, that's cool and all, but I was afraid that it was going to be driving this too hard. So I'm going to try this way and just see how it goes. Uh, according to online resources, the uh, Jerry Garcia's amps didn't have these grid stoppers at all. So that's kind of curious. It was just directly into the amp. Um, I'll have to read up on how that affects tone, but I'm going to stick with the 65 version or just mostly the Fender stock of the 68Ks wired in parallel so that actually equals out to like three point something or 33 ish 31 um basically you're halving that and then you're going to see mogami coax cable that's grounded up at the top this is going to reduce all the noise hopefully a lot of the noise that's inside the circuit this is a very sensitive area same with going up to the pot here especially running under the board 
So uh, just from learning about how Dumble did his improvements over Fender circuits and just general modern best practices for amps, uh, usually these are coax. So instead of going all original on that, I, again, I really wanted a low noise floor on this. This is one way to achieve it. It's not going to look like the cloth wire, but I think that's okay. It's a small sacrifice for what we're going for here. Plus, it's going to be under the board, right? So kind of recapping, I'm using metal film anywhere that touches ground. Here is for the reverb transformer. Here's a, a Dale Precision Metal Film, military grade. Love that military grade stuff. Over here, I was talking about disengaging the trem pot, um, basically the wire that goes here. This intensity uh, pot is a 50K, so it actually drags the signal down quite a bit. So if you want to maintain or just uh, increase gain on this side, eliminate that pot altogether. Now, I want to keep it in there. So this is a, basically an on-off switch. So all the way when this thing's off, you hear that click. That disengages whatever is between here. And then when you turn it on, it re-engages it. So when I don't want the trim on or if I want that extra boost of gain, I just turn it all the way off. And if I want it back in the circuit per original, I just turn this on and then just keep it at the lowest setting. So there's pretty good resistance here. I picked this up at uh, Ted, Ted Weber's website, and I, I'm pretty impressed. It seems like it's an alpha pot. This is a, just by comparison, I prefer alpha pots over CTS. This is a CTS pot, and the torque required to change it is a lot less. Like this feels... And say same with all the rest. Like it just it takes a lot more to turn, and I like that because a it's not going to move, and b it just gives it a, a pretty good fit and feel. I have the bus wire. I think I did a pretty good job running underneath the bus wire. Ba all the scheme. The, basically, the scheme is anything in the preamp section is going to be going directly to this one grounding spot on the side. Best practice, farthest away from where the power amp is going to be grounded. So the, the power amp side, um, the first capacitor there, which is this one, is going to be grounded here. The rest of the power amps are going to be grounded up at the preamp. Another thing I'm working on is the speaker out is just going to be one speaker out. This external speaker, in my opinion, is pretty worthless, at least for what I need it for. So I'm going to relabel this as my preamp out. I hope it's not too close, but I started to research, um, and this is a, a Switchcraft, I think it's a 114L, this is a long 14, 14X, maybe. It's, it's basically a um, uh, one way that I can disable, basically create a preamp. Where are we at here? So I'm going to take the output of the vibrato channel, which is this is going to be removed, this normal channel, because another thing I'm doing is jumping the normal channel into the um, vibrato channel to give both channels reverb, okay? And one of the changes I need to do there is basically take this, um, take out that other, that normal channel as part of it. Now, this is the preferred way of jumping the channels over and it's not the way that fender does it in their 64 because there's the way that fender does it in their 64 creates some uh noise it basically it's just a dumb transfer and this is a coupling uh transfer into that circuit so pretty cool pretty cool um so yeah i'm going to take the output at this point so we are going to have reverb going into this preamp out and then the preamp out is going to dis... So if there's a cable that's plugged in here, you can see I was doing some research on this end. If there's a cable that's plugged in, it's going to disable the connection going back into the power amp circuit. So at this point right here, at this um, 0 0.001 microfarad cap, it's going to receive a ground signal. Um, that way the speaker load is going to have zero output. 
so the idea is if I run my preamp out on this amp, boom, and run it into my other amps over here, this amp or this speaker is going to be disabled because I want all the tone coming out of something like this. Okay, so that's that's why I'm approaching that and I have it all down. I just need to wire it up. Here is my board wire wound resistors for the lowest noise possible. These are all polyester 6PS or 225. Actually, most I think all of them are 6PS um, polyester caps. Um, I'm going to do the trem fix right off the bat, the trem ticking fix. These <laughs> caps are huge. These are FNTs. And let me tell you, there's, they say they're 25, 25, 25 microfarad, 25 volts, but they are incredibly no, like low ESR. They're actually 0.3 ohms versus this um, Sprag 25, 25 was, was one ohm. So this is incredible. I'm really happy with how this is coming along. That's my quick update. I'm going to run out of space. We'll talk soon.